We're bullish on the Bitcoin. We're bullish on Ethereum. Let's start with Bitcoin here. So indecision last week, the first red candle in fucking ages, right? First red candle in ages. It's like, oh, is this maybe the temp top? You know, going into last week's weekly close, everyone's like, okay, you know, we've got five green weekly candles in a row. Finally, we print a red one. Maybe it's time for a correction. We're going to 42K. We're going to blah, blah, blah. And this next candle this week is just an absolute Chad Thundercock of a candle. And that's exactly what I was expecting. And I talked about this in the last video. If you go watch last week's stream, I said, I'm expecting Bitcoin to break out here and I'm expecting it to accelerate with a big green candle. And we're going to be heading to like 55K. And that's kind of what's happening right now. So I'm really excited with how this is playing out. I'm super duper long Bitcoin right now. So it feels good, man. We'll kind of talk about some potential setups here. We can see, okay, if you missed this setup, how do you get in the next trade here? There was a couple setups that played out super duper clean. So I'll go over those in hindsight here, just kind of give you an idea so you can see what it looks like. And then we could talk about some potential setups that we're going to look for going into the next week. So if we're just looking at Bitcoin on a high time frame here, what is the draw on price? And we've been talking about this forever. I actually have a tweet that I sent out back in June when we were trading down here and it was just this box and then an arrow like this, right? Because essentially this is the area where that complacency balance, if this is a complacency balance, would happen to, or at the very least where I expect us to find some resistance. This is the point of origin of this entire dump. This is a bearish order block. Go watch my order block video that I just posted. This is the bearish order block that broke market structure near a key high time frame level. Right. And what happens is we don't we let price rally away and then we wait for it to return. And that's where we look for our short setup. If there is going to be one, I don't necessarily think that we're going to do this. We could. Anything is possible. This doesn't feel like a complacency shoulder to me, like complacency shoulder. Like I think it would have happened a lot faster. Like we spent three months down here and then we fucking rallied away. But this was a pretty big fucking shakeout here. And obviously very clearly there was some large players and smart players accumulating here. Where do they distribute the Bitcoins that they accumulated here? Is it up here, right? Or is it much higher? Do they distribute some up here? I don't fucking know. I don't really care. I'm just going to continue to trade level to level because that's what works for me. This is the bearish order block, the up candle before the down move that broke market structure. So on a first return to this area, we will absolutely be looking for signs to potentially get short. This is a very, very key area in the chart. The issue is, is this is the weekly candle. So this is a 10% box in price. So if you're just looking to short this here, you know, your stock is far away right at the very closest it's here or a looser stop right would be above all-time high I don't really like that setup so that's not one I'd be interested in taking rather what I'll be doing is I'll be looking for signs of potential weakness here on the lower time frames. So if we're coming into a weekly area that I expect to be resistance, I want to go and look at the low time frame for clues that the trend might be shifting back in line with that weekly order flow because this is a lower high potential here on the weekly, right? And what is if this ends up just doing this in here on the four hour and the lower time frames, price will be putting in bearish market structure before the weekly even starts to turn bearish. So that's what we're going to be looking for in this coming week. I have a feeling that we push pretty hard into this zone before even getting some sort of a retracement. However, if we're going to get some sort of big correction on this move, let's assume we push to 55K, right? Which is effectively the open here. I think the correction would occur from this area, right? And, and, and maybe it does something like like this and then we go up again I don't fucking know right I have no idea I very much doubt that we come all the way back here and retest this area could we is anything possible of course anything is possible would I want us to come back to like 35,000 fucking absolutely not I think that'd be insane before making a new all-time high but it is possible right we could have a very deep pullback and then continuation anything is possible but if I had to guess the two most likely scenarios for me are move up in here and then get a pullback and then continue 
or move up into here and then just reaccumulate, consolidate, range, shake a bunch of people out, right? And then continue through all time high. Those are the two most likely scenarios I think will happen. But this is just an area where I think it would behoove you to be safe and to potentially hedge your bets. If you bought a bunch of Bitcoin down here, it is not a terrible idea to take some profit into this area. I'm not saying sell all your Bitcoin to Tether, but this would be the optimal area to at least take some profits. And the reason it's nice, like let's say you're not interested in shorting at all. Well, you could hedge some of your BTC longs or take some profit on spot buys from down here, up here. And what you now know is if this is a bearish order block, and we reject, there you go. You've protected yourself from some downside. However, if we do this, this is now a bullish breaker. And so any sort of move back into here is a gig along. So maybe you hedge some of your BTC here. It breaks up. That next pullback, you re-long. So maybe you miss 5% of the move, but you're now super duper long again with an invalidation here for a massive leg up. Because if this becomes a bullish breaker, the move that comes after that is going to be massive to the upside. So your invalidation of where the idea is wrong in terms of taking some profits or shorting is relatively close based on the weekly chart. And you have a clear level to flip bias at, right? If we get above here, you're longing every dip towards much higher prices. You do not need to catch. Let's assume that we're going to 80K. Let's just speak hypothetically. Like, let's say this is where we're going. If you're long from here to here, right? And then you close some of your long and then eventually we end up going here, but you missed out on like this because you said, okay, I'm gonna hedge here and then you re-long up here. You still crush this move, right? You do not need to catch the entire move. The goal is to catch the meat of the move and protect yourself potential downside. You do not have to do this at all. If you're like, we're going to 80K, I'm 100% sure of it. By all means, just hold all your Bitcoin. But if we do something like this, are you gonna freak out and go, oh shit, I should have take, taken profit up here. Then you take profit here and then it bounces and then you fucking buy back higher. Just have a plan and stick to it. So I'm just explaining explaining how my thought process is going into this area and what I'm going to do. If you think we're going way higher and you don't give a fuck, then who gives a fuck? Just have a plan. This to me is the optimal area to at least take some profits, hedge, or at the very least, be careful of being super duper long into this kind of, you know, key weekly area of resistance. I think this 55 to like 50, you know, 60 K area, if we're going to put in a big lower high or just a temporary lower high, whether it does this or it does you know a much deeper pullback this is where that will form i don't think it goes like this and then comes all the way back down here i think if we're gonna have a big correction this is the area where that correction will form so whatever you choose to do is up to you but i will be monitoring this area very close taking some profits on spot buys from down here taking some profits on longs and looking for potential signs to weakness i'm not just going to be shorting here blind you absolutely could but that's not something i'm interested in i'll be watching on the lower time frames, the daily, the H4, the 12 hour, to see if we get any reasons to get short. If there's any clues saying, hey, actually, this looks like it might pull back, you know, let's get into a short or hedge our bet. So, what I'm gonna do is just mark out these two levels here. That is that weekly order block there. Now we're gonna zoom in a little bit and say, okay, what are some potential trades? Because, in all honesty, if I zoom into the 12 hour, this is to me where I think price comes to next, right here. We've had this level marked for a long time. So this is a 12 hour order block within that weekly order block. This is where I think price is coming to. So how do we get in there? What is the long the dip strategy, right? Because we're basically just in a monster uptrend here. So we just made a higher high. The weekly is about to close green. We're gonna close through this high and we're closing through this high. So I think it's a week where we're gonna be longing the dip. Uh, into this area. So just looking at the 12 hour chart, this 12 hour candle is gonna close as a new higher high, right? So effectively, what are we looking for? We're looking for retracements into this range to get long. I don't know how deep they will come. I don't know any of that shit, but if we get any sort of retracement back into this high, which is around 50,500 down to about 49,500. So this is a little thousand dollar range here. That's an SR flip that I want to buy if given the opportunity. Will we get it? I don't know, but if we get any sort of pullback there, I'm looking to long the dip up into about 55,000. I think 53,000 could provide some resistance and then 55,000 is ultimately where I'm targeting. All of this has been laid out in the last stream as well, as well as on tweets on Twitter. We had the magnet drawn up here as the where we're going on price. So all that shit 
is fine and dandy. That's where I think price is going to. So we're looking at long dips this week, absolutely. I do think we're gonna actually see a, a bit of a bounce on BTC dominance, which might mean that you wanna focus on longing Bitcoin instead of longing altcoins. So looking, uh, looking at the one hour here, this is a pretty vertical move. I wouldn't really short this right now unless something crazy happens but effectively we're looking for this range to get retraced into and we're looking for a reason to get long so again that kind of area from the 12 hour chart you know is right around here so if we pull a fib from here to here i would imagine that this line is right around the 62 percent retracement if i had to eyeball it that's kind of where i'd be interested in reloading on bitcoin longs if given the opportunity now we might not pull back that far if we consolidate up here and then we put in like a, a little like kind of sfp of the range or some sort of low time frame sweep right maybe the weekly open would be our key level we dip below the weekly open reclaim it that might be all you get you might not get the deep pullback but if we do get the deep pullback i'm looking around 50,400 50,500 as a deep pullback potential otherwise if we consolidate up here after a decent up move and then we get some sort of low time frame action like this that would be kind of a long trigger right where you enter here your stop would go there and your target would be up there so hopefully that makes sense for everyone in terms of the plan for bitcoin i don't really see any short scenarios playing out right now unless we put in some sort of swing high here and then put in a big sfp or like some sort of over under maybe i would be interested in shorting this back down but to be honest with you i believe shorts on any sort of significant time frame right now are counter trend the 12 hour is bullish right the daily is bullish the three-day chart is bullish so you know the four hour chart is bullish the one hour chart is bullish so if you're looking for a short you need to be basically on quite a low time frame and realize that you are trading counter the high time frame trend which means likely the potential of your trade setup working out is going to be greatly reduced right we want to trade with high time frame order flow if high time frame order flow is bullish just because the fucking 30 minute chart looks a little bearish i gotta realize the h4 the daily the 12 hour are all bullish rather than trying to short I want to be looking for reasons to get long uh, on pullbacks to get that continuation. This to me is the draw. This is where I think we're going. But <laughs> this is where I think price is going eventually, 55K. Uh, but I do think 53K would be kind of our short-term target back into this price floor here. And then ultimately, this would be my next target. And again, I will be looking for signs of weakness into this area, right? If we get some triggers of weakness like a high time frame swing failure pattern on the daily the 12 hour something like that that will be our first clue that we may be rounding off and potentially turning around so we'll wait and see but this weekly is about to close green we're about to close as a higher high on most of the high time frames that i watch so longing dips is still the plan till a few thousand dollars higher this was the long setup that we talked about on stream last week so if you look here, we talked about a pullback and we got a 12 hour bullish swing failure pattern right here. It's hard to see, but this is a bullish SFP on the H12. H12 is bullish, right? We're up, we're here to here. So we're in a bullish 12 hour range, pulled back bullish H12 SFP into a 12 hour breaker. That was your long signal. Or if you missed that, here's another breaker the up candle that caused the down move you could have long there and then ultimately you could have zoomed in and said okay if we're bullish in this zone what do i want to do i want to look for low time frame triggers to get long and you had a few of them here right here's your hourly breaker right here okay this is now in an uptrend on the hourly what are we looking for bullish order blocks to buy the dip into because we're bullish here's your bullish order block right here down candle rallies away breaks market structure the upside pulls back launches i'll pull my fib just for shits and giggles right into the ote this is 101 so last stream stream before and the altcoin video i explain exactly these concepts these are 100 percent my bread and butter type of setups and they played out perfectly here on bitcoin so hopefully uh that makes sense to you guys let me know in the chat i'm gonna take a quick second here to drink some water because i'm literally dying i'm gonna get into ethereum now 
So Ethereum bullish as fuck as well. I talked about this as being, I think, the draw on price right around here. And we came up to my level, little pullback, nice retest there, and boom, we're legging up again. It looks pretty good, but the reason I rotated out of Ethereum here into Bitcoin was this chart, right? So what I initially posted here is right here, go check my Twitter. I said, I think Ethereum leads the way on the next move because we came into support, made a higher high, made a higher low, made another higher high, another higher low. So I said, okay, I think Ethereum comes up to here and tests this level, and I think it leads the breakout. Remember, this chart is the ratio between Ethereum to Bitcoin. So if this chart is bullish, that means Ethereum is more bullish than Bitcoin. And so that's how I was able to predict that Ethereum was gonna outpace Bitcoin in the next leg, and that's exactly what happened. So instead of longing Bitcoin, I longed Ethereum. I caught the higher beta move, both went up, but Ethereum went up more. And then when we came up into resistance here, go check on Twitter. The tweet here was Ethereum is gonna outpace Bitcoin. The tweet here was I'm shifting back out of Ethereum back into Bitcoin because we came into a high time frame level of resistance. And while I think both are still bullish, I said, I think this is resistance. Maybe we do something like this and then continue higher. And so during this period of time, Bitcoin is going to be outperforming Ethereum. So I'm going to want to be long Bitcoin rather than Ethereum. And if you want to add another layer of complexity, you can also go look at the BTC dominance chart, see if that is looking bullish, which also might be a clue that Bitcoin is going to lead the next move. But effectively, it was as simple as that. Ethereum was into support and I thought it was going to break higher. Ethereum BTC, excuse me. So I said, I want to be long FUSD rather than BTC USD. And then when we came into resistance, I've rotated back. And as you can see right now, this is down one and a half percent on the day. Bitcoin is up 2x what Ethereum is. This chart exemplifies the difference in the strength between the two assets, and it will allow you to determine which might be the higher beta play, where your money might wanna be, all that fucking fun stuff. I talked about this in my altcoin series, so if you want an explanation on how to understand this ratio better, go watch that video. But yeah, this is why I went into F, and this is why I rotated back into BTC. Support, now we're into resistance, expecting probably a little bit of a pullback here. FUSD does still look bullish. We came up, we tested my level, retested it, and we're now pushing away again. If you look at the H12, this is effectively about as clean as it gets in terms of a bullish order block. So we were basically saying, if you go watch my last video, I said, as soon as Ethereum closes through this level, I'm expecting it to teleport. It's exactly what happened. We got the close through, teleport. Again, this is consolidation, but to me, this looked bullish because we were grinding into a level and we were making higher highs and higher lows. Then once we close through this level, there was your teleport. And if you look right here, this is about as clean as it gets in terms of a bullish order block there, right? Here's your down candle before an up move that breaks market structure near a key high time frame level, you're buying the dip, right? So if you miss the long down here, why are you not longing this pullback here? And if we break up again here, guess what? Rinse and repeat. If we pull back into that new bullish order block that forms, you long it. So Ethereum looks pretty good still for higher prices. Uh, right now, I do think Bitcoin's gonna lead the way a little bit. I think Bitcoin is really coiling up for a big move. We could have a 10% move on Bitcoin here, which would bring us to that 55, 56K level that I was talking about. But you know, ultimately, Ethereum is you know looking like it wants to just rip through to all time high. I mean, the monthly chart is insane. This chart is insane as well. I mean, again, where does this thing fucking stop? We're well through the seven nine at this point. It looks very likely that Ethereum wants to make a new all time high. Could Ethereum make a new all time high and then Bitcoin reject here? I don't fucking know. I have no idea. I've never really seen anything like this. This chart's fucking crazy, but it looks good. And in, as long as it keeps putting in bullish market structure, I'm not really interested in, in shorting it. Where do I think this move stops or where do I think it might find some resistance here? I would probably venture to say this is the area, right? We're in it right now. So kind of like Bitcoin has this area up here that we're not quite into yet. Ethereum has moved further off the bottom. If there's any signs of weakness in here on the high time frame, like maybe, you know, we do one of these, 
then maybe I might be interested in shorting Ethereum. But at this point, as long as the high time frames keep putting in and the low time frames keep putting in bullish market structure, I don't think you want to short this thing yet until we get some sort of high time frame potential trigger and then go to the low time frame and look for bearish price action to start forming. But this is an area to be cautious. Obviously, this is the bearish order block that caused this entire down move. So if a reversal happens, it happens in here. But for now, this looks very bullish. So I would keep longing the dip. However, I do think that based on how this looks, right, there's going to be a, maybe a little period of time here where Bitcoin takes the driver's seat and outperforms Ethereum. And just from a market structure perspective, look at how much of a, you know, how further this is off the bottom, like Bitcoin's the laggard here. So I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin takes the driver's seat a little bit and we see a big expansion up into here and it outperforms most altcoins. Uh, sure, risk management, very important part of trading. Generally, I'm risking anywhere from one to 5% of my trading account on any given trade. And you also have to remember, let's say you want a maximum of 5% risk, right? You have to consider, is that on one position? Because if you open one trade at 5%, well, you're now at 5%, you can't open another one because now you have 10% of your account at risk if both trades were to get stopped out. Generally, I don't want more than kind of like one to five, sometimes as much as 10 percent of my account at risk based on all the trades I have open at any given time. Risk management is super key. Before you enter any trade, you need to know where's my entry and why, where is my stop and why, and where is my target and why. If you do not know the answer to those three things, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. You don't have an actual plan. You're gambling in my opinion. And how are you supposed to figure out the right position sizing and all that shit if you can't answer those three questions. So risk management, super duper fucking key. You need to do the math, right? You need to do the math. If you risk 10% per trade, you're only able to lose 10 trades until you blow up your account. So you need to do the math. What is your strike rate, right? If you're winning 35, 40% of your trades, is it possible that you lose five or six or seven trades in a row? Absolutely. If you do that and you're risking 10% per trade, you've completely fucked your account. So you need to do the math. Uh, there's a lot of spreadsheets and infographics that explain percentage drawdown, how much it takes to get back to break even, as well as you know what your strike rate needs to be based on the risk reward you're looking at per trade to determine where your break even point is. So these are all things that you need to understand and figure out before you even consider trading in my opinion. That's just how the math susses out, right? If you're risking 10% per trade, realize that if you lose two trades, you're now down 20% on your entire account. To get back to break even, let's say you had a $100,000 account, you're risking 10% per trade, you lose two trades in a row, you're now down at $80,000. To get back to break even, you need to do like 25% or something like that. I can't remember the fucking math, but you have to understand that going into drawdown is very detrimental to your account. You want to be able to afford multiple consecutive losses in a row and not completely fucking nuke your account. Hey, is there any way we can know if this is a bullish or bearish consolidation? Well, look at the preceding trend that goes into the consolidation, right? And then look for clues that price wants to either continue that trend or if it's looking like it's going to reverse, it's going to show you. First of all, we're not consolidating, we're trending. But if we are going like this, the preceding trend is bullish here. So we wanna look for reasons, deviation, reclaim the mid range, retest the range high for this to see continuation. If this is gonna reverse, it will show you. And generally you'll get something like a fake out to the upside and then a break back down. It's all market structure though. How do you know if the trend, the consolidation is bullish or bearish? Well, what is the market structure? Are we making higher highs or higher lows? Or are we breaking levels? Even though it's going sideways, there's still market structure here. There's still market structure here. Break of a low, lower high, right? And that and it breaks down. So there's still market structure even in a consolidation. You just got to zoom in, find the right time frame, and then start looking for clues whether or not this thing is going to break down or break up. Do you have any idea what you're doing? Like, are you just going to put 500 bucks in Ethereum and hope it goes up? I'm not here to tell you what to do with your money. Here's some not financial advice. Do not invest more than you're willing to lose or you're able to lose and do your own fucking research. I'm not here to tell you what the fuck to do. I'm just here to show you guys how I mark up the charts and things I might think might happen. But if you're asking me, is $500 good enough to start? What's that mean? Are you trading or are you just putting in 500 bucks and hoping it becomes more? If you put 500 bucks 
into Ethereum right now for that 500 to become 10,000 or 5,000, Ethereum needs to go to $39,000, right? So what is the likelihood that Ethereum 10 X is from here? I don't know. That's for you to fucking decide. But if you're asking if $500 is enough to trade, sure. I mean, any amount is enough, right? It's all relative. The account size doesn't matter. You're risking a set percentage. Stop thinking in terms of dollars being like, okay, I'm risking 20 bucks. I'm risking 2000 bucks. It's just a percentage, right? You're risking 2% of your account. And that way, when your account gets bigger, you won't get shook out from sizing up because it's just a set percentage. It's 2%. Whether that 2% is 2000, 20,000, 200, doesn't really matter. If you invest 500 and you're using it to trade and try and build your account, you can turn that into a lot of money if you know what you're fucking doing. It sounds like you got some, uh, you should learn some of the basics. Like if you're on YouTube, just hoping people tell you exactly what the fuck's going to happen. You're in the wrong place. You got to put in the time in the charts and study and learn and figure things out and actually make a plan, know what risk management is and all that kind of shit before you even consider investing money uh, or just buy and hold and then don't worry about any of the shit that I just said. I'm teaching you guys to fish. I'm not giving you fish. Remember that. What about alt sir? Specifically, if one is going parabolic, how do you know when to compound and take profit? When something's going parabolic, it can be very hard to trade. Uh, generally, what I would do is uh, once I'm up like multiple X's on something, right? If I'm up two X on my investment, I always take some off the table uh, and then just use market structure as a guide. If your chart looks like this on the fucking daily on the one hour, it's going to look like this. Right. So use market structure. OK, bring your stop up to here, then bring it up to here, then bring it up to here, then bring it up to here. And as long as it keeps making higher highs and higher lows and then eventually maybe it does this. OK, well, now you're out. But maybe that's because it's going to start correcting downward now because it's broken market structure. So as long as it keeps making bullish market structure, stay in it and then, you know, trail your stop, take some profits along the way. But if it's parabolic, go find a time frame where there's actual levels that you can see and buy the fucking dips. And as long as it keeps going, keep doing it. But eventually it will break market structure. And you know, there you go. That's when you get out. You don't need to catch from here to here, right? But if you catch from here to fucking here, you did really well, like FTM. So I know FTM just went into price discovery. This is untradeable. But if you go to the lower time frame, you know, this was a straight line on the daily. But like I said, if you zoom in, you get an actual trend. So as long as this keeps putting in bullish market structure, we're bullish based on the high time frame. There's your bullish order block. Boom. Here's an SR flip. Boom. Here's another bullish order block that got tagged right here. Here's a bullish order block. If we come down in here, I would probably long it. Otherwise, if we make a higher high, I'll look to long the dip. So as long as it keeps making higher highs and higher lows, you can keep looking for longs, right? You just need to zoom in to a lower time frame where you can actually see structure. Because if you're looking at this thing on the daily, the daily order block that is relevant is way the fuck down here. Could it come down here and do this? Absolutely. But that might take literally days. So if you're trying to scalp this thing, you need to go on a lower time frame. Say, okay, the high time frame is bullish. So if this makes a higher high above here, I want to buy the next dip into that 15 minute order block. So, I mean, effectively, what this guy is asking here is compounding winners versus taking risk off. So, I think those things are not mutually exclusive, right? I think you can do both. If price is trending, you know, let's say this is your structure to the left right? And then we're on the way back up now. You're going to be looking to take profits at these areas, right? Because these are areas that price could potentially reject from, reverse from. So let's say you take some profits off here and then we pull back. Well, if this is maintaining bullish market structure, you can now add back, right? Take some profits off here. You can now add back, right? So as long as price is continuing to show bullishness, you can take price, you can take risk off at resistance and then add back on pullbacks, assuming you think the uptrend continues. But in an uptrend, where do you want to compound? You want to kind of compound at those higher lows, right? In a trending environment, if I longed here and then we broke high, I can add here. We broke high, I can add here. And you can also be taking some off the table here and then re-adding it back here. And you've now locked in gains along the way. So I would say for beginners, generally less is more. Set your entry, set your take profit, set your stop and let the trade fucking ride. Less is more, right? You're going to fuck yourself up a lot, taking profit early, closing trades too early, especially early on. Make the plan, stick with it. As you get better at trading, you have more
more experience, by all means, there are tons of ways that you can optimize your trades by taking profit, moving up stops, trailing stops, re-adding, compounding, but that's much more advanced stuff that I don't think you should be doing until you're already consistently able to make money on your basic trade setups. Overall thoughts on the NFT market at the moment. I mean, shit keeps going up, but I do think there's a lot of froth in the market right now. A lot of retail focused on NFTs as well. I've got friends who were messaging me at Bitcoin was at 50, 60K the first time about NFTs and if they should buy them and shit. I think 99% of NFTs are going to zero. Like I think there's going to be the ones that have staying power, punks, the Fidenzas and art block shit, maybe Board 8 Yacht Club, Pudgy Penguins, because I own a couple. But uh, I think most of them are going to go to zero, just like altcoins. You have the ICO craze. A few of them stick around. Most of them go to zero. It doesn't mean you can't make money on the ones that end up going to zero, but just be aware. I think a lot of these will be e-liquid and worthless outside of, you know, maybe the big ones. So yeah, just be careful. It does seem a little bit frothy right now, for sure, in my opinion, but it can remain frothy for a long time. But yeah, I think there's a little bit of craziness and we already saw a little bit of a spooking when F pumped. We saw some prices drop on a couple of things, you know? So there's gonna be the holders who are like, listen, I'm not selling this punk fucking ever. And there are gonna be the people who are kind of trading NFTs and you know, what happens if F goes up five or 10% in a day or drops 10% in a day and the floors on these things are gonna drop? I don't really know. I think the reason most people fail at trading is not because it is hard. I mean, it is hard, but I think most people are just not willing to put in the time necessary and they give up. If you think it's hard and you don't want to put in the time, then give up. You got to put in the time. People think that making money is easy. If it was, everyone would fucking do it, right? Value is very scarce. So when you find it, you got to be willing to put in the effort to kind of extract that value. And the only way to do that, in my opinion, is putting in the time, putting in the work in the charts thousands and thousands of hours. It takes repetition. I always liken it to sports. You know, how many jump shots in practice is Kobe Bryant taking and free throws and whatever before he can go and do it in the game? And it's incalculable the amount of time. But most people are not willing to put in the effort. I think most people on the whole are very fucking lazy. There's been opportunities everywhere over the last week. We've got money pouring out of our ears at this point between the volatility and crypto and then the NFT stuff. There's money coming everywhere. There's tons of opportunity. I know sometimes it can be overwhelming, right? You get that fear of FOMO because you're like, holy shit, this guy just flipped this NFT for all this money and this guy's long, this altcoin that just went up huge and like blah, blah, blah. And you get kind of like paralysis by analysis. What you need to do is create a fucking plan. Once you have a plan, your stress levels and your levels of FOMO will be greatly reduced because you will have an actual actionable plan for what you're gonna do if certain things happen. Shout out to BitBoy. Uh, BitBoy, <laughs> fuck. Fuck BitBoy, shout out to buy Bit. Fuck BitBoy, shout out to buy Bit. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do, but that's probably a good idea. I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. I feel like shit. Super fun time at the wedding, but uh, yeah, my head is ringing. I'm wearing a Nike hat, Adidas pants, Nike socks, and Adidas shoes. So that just should let you know where my head is at right now. Just complete disarray and it's unacceptable. It's just an absolute Chad thundercock of a candle. Just massive green dildo. It was uh, super aggressive. What the fuck? I have a hard enough time with technology as it is. If you think it's hard and you don't want to put in the time, then give up. You big pussy, fucking give up. Fuck you. So I don't feel like this is complacency. Maybe that is me being complacent. Cred, credit. Get it? That even fucking rhymed? Even when I'm fucking hungover, I'm hilarious. Okay, cool. My fibs are fucked. First of all, why would I ever use fucking that ugly ass fucking blue color? My fucking trading view's been fucking hacked by someone with terrible taste. I'll have a fucking meltdown and I'm way too hungover to deal with this bullshit. Guys, I'm not gonna lie. My brain is operating at sub 50% capacity right now. So I feel like I'm making sense, but to be honest with you, I have no idea. Let me know if all of this shit I'm saying makes sense or if I should just shut up. These Canadian and he's got to pick Drake or they'll take away his health care. BitBoy says we're going to 240k. BitBoy can suck my left testicle. What the fuck kind of question is that, bro? <laughs> By the way you framed your question, I have a feeling you don't know what you're fucking doing. Fuck kind of question is that, man? Come on now. I'm too hungover for a fucking stupid question today. Sorry for the dumb question. At least you apologize. BitBoy is a great trader. If you're not joking, I'm going to block you immediately. You'll never be able to watch my streams again. I'm like getting like I'm overheating right now. Um, <laughs> I'm like all sweaty. It's gross. Whiskey on the rocks. No fucking chase. Fuck. I'm violently hungover. I think that was just luck. I think that was just luck. I don't think that's actual skill. BitBoy and chill. There is no chill with BitBoy. Should I buy now? Maybe.